The meta settled down a little bit and Riot seems to have enough data to work on a slightly bigger patch, giving buffs a plenty and trying to wash off that 10.21 mess. No reworks yet, though many have been teased like Keeper. So until those goodies hit the arena, we get quite a few changes in the nuts and bolts to keep things a little bit more even. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Pro Guide Teamfight Tactics video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be looking into patch 10.22. We're going to be going over through the interesting changes that Riot has made and making some predictions of our own and how our experts might think that the meta is going to shake out. 10.22 is a little bit of an in-between patch where lots of small things happen, so it might seem like a lot, but nothing meta changing should occur. It's much like the patches before mid-set or set expansions. It's definitely a breath of fresh air, so as usual, we're going to be looking into some trait changes, champion buffs and nerfs, item changes, system changes, and finally, we're going to be hitting those predictions. And for our question of the day, which comp do you think is going to dominate in 10.22? Watch the video and make your prediction below. Keep in mind that the predictions made in this video are exactly that, predictions. They are subject to change and we will definitely keep you guys updated in our mid-patch update. Feel free to share any comments below, giving us your feedback, especially if you have something new to add or if you disagree with something that we predicted. We are always happy to read those comments. If anything is pulled from the original PPE changes or added in, you can find the info in the comments as well about what ended up not making it to the live servers. Before we dive right on in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a Discord community and a new subreddit that is growing really, really fast. We only have you all to thank for that, and we want to continue building our community and hoping you guys become a part of it. Make sure you check out the link in the description down below. Quite a few trait changes this patch, but a couple are just bug fixes. Cultist Chosens now count as two units towards Galio's HP. Remember when they made the change and we wondered about it in our rundown? Well, they just fixed that and it's a lot more attractive to pick up an early Cultist Chosen since they will be making the Galio much stronger. Same goes for Keepers, where Chosen Keeper grants double the shield amount, making Chosen Keeper less of a meme. Riotee's Keeper overhaul sometime soon, but this should make them slightly better now at least. Dazzler gets a minor rework and a much needed one. The trait now scales the AD reduction instead of the duration, and the duration staying stable. This makes Dazzler Chosen's a lot better. Four Ninjas get scaled down a tad, reverting the change in 10.21 a bit. It was really too strong a leap going from 1 to 4, and it's a nerf to Akali. Sharpshooter Bronze trait was fairly mediocre, outside of carrying the effects of the spells. It's now a much better splash, since it now does an extra 10% damage. At the same time, the Chase trait is nerfed by 10%, since 6 Sharpshooter was effectively deleting your whole team. As we said, not too many trait changes, but they are toning down sharpshooters while making it a more interesting variety build. Champion buffs and nerfs. Let's go ahead and talk about what changed with our champions starting at the one cost. One costs. Lissandra now targets the highest AD champion in the field. That means she applies Dazzler much better, even making her worth of an early Dazzler chosen. Vayne got super buffed, as small as the numbers may seem. Paired with her attack speed buff two patches ago, she might be a viable reroll carry or at least a very good early chosen. Finally, Fiora got changed in her chosen form. Remember, different chosens get different stat boosts. Fiora used to get HP, but now she gets mana reduction, which is pretty nice for that stun factor. Two costs. Vi is slightly more viable. Yeah, we went there. She now does more damage in her 3 star form, which is okay, but she also shreds armor for longer and casts faster as chosen, getting the same treatment as Fiora. She might be much better chosen now, and this potentially buffs Warlords a little bit as well. 3 costs. Akali got a little bit of a nerf in her machine gun? M machine knife? version, whatever that is, she gets mana locked for a little bit longer, helping your backline get a breather before she even gets around to one-shotting them. Definitely a nerf. Nunu gets a really big buff to his 3-star form, which is okay news, but since he can be a decent chosen for Elderwood or Brawler comps, it's worth going for as a 3-star now. Evelyn gets a huge buff in her 3-star form as well, perhaps becoming the next big shade carry. She now has increased survivability due to her build involving Gunblade and her moving around when she casts her spell. Forecasts. Ari gets another nerf, but this time it's more serious. This might bring the Vanguard Ari staple, but it should still be viable. Ash got her big bug fixed, and she's much better as a crit carry now since her flurry can now crit on every shot instead of only the first one. Morgana spell targeting gets a little bit better, from full random to controlled random. She'll now cast her spell better, but still not hit the enemy carry every single time. 
Legendaries. Lee Sin gets a much deserved nerf, but definitely not gutted. He will not completely lock down his primary target, allowing them to have some breathing room before he knocks them out of the map. Set was tanky enough as a chosen, so he gets more damage instead. He be hurting now, as the kids say these days. He also has some damage into his spell, but only for a champion that he takes into the air and not the AoE. Lilia changes a little bit, making it easier to break the sleep and nuke the champion she makes snore in the middle of the fight. This makes her damage a lot more consistent, but she remains a fringe pick. Ezreal got a really nice buff, casting faster and not only after everyone's dead. With the buff to Dazzlers, this might be time for the Prodigal Explorer to make some more appearances. And that's gonna be it with the champion changes. Not too much stuff, mainly targeted at balancing things out and bringing some dominant stuff down on tap. Item changes. Ludens Echo changes a bit, only damaging CC champions extra. Fairly small nerf, but it's much worse against keepers or lock it for now. Runin's Hurricane is essentially a sharpshooter spatula now, except that it doesn't really bounce spells. It's pretty amazing for Jin though. Rabadon gets a decent buff, as a 40% never really made it into the desirable item. This helps it a bit and it should still be a little bit weird to build it with all the good rod items. ZZ Rot Portal's taunt gets a smaller duration, but it doesn't really matter since taunt means that you can just change targets initially and then just hit the taunter. The only thing this fixes is the units running around the taunter for too long because there's no space to hit them, losing too much time in the process. Zeke's got too much of a buff, so it's getting a slight nerf now, landing in the middle. This should still be a really strong pick for a stacking item. 70% attack speed to 3 units is nothing to scoff at. There's a clear identity between Shiv and Ludens now, one is better with CC and the other one's against shield. So, nice and tidy. System changes. Really small things here, but you can actually check the chances for your chosen in your current level by hovering over the chosen icon to the right of the shop. The second change is also really minor. When you win or lose to a Galio or a ZZ Rot minion, you will take one damage instead of zero. That doesn't really change anything much, unless you lose and then you have one HP, in which case, kinda sucks. Now let's go ahead and move on to the predictions. Champion predictions. Lissandra and Vayne are much more viable now. Lissandra could be used to counter the AD builds like Talon and Vayne and can either be a really good transition carry or carry on her own. We tried her a little bit in the PBE and she did a lot as a chosen with Ginsu's, Quicksilver, and Bloodthirster. Evelyn might be a potentially devastating 3-star carry, which could revitalize the Shade comp. Vi could also be a good potential Warlord Chosen, besides just Katarina or Garen just being the triggers into that comp. Lee Sin is much less OP now, probably not as much of a plug and play, but still a strong legendary that you should consider adding to your comp if he fits. Comp predictions. Shades could be back on the back of Evelyn, but only as a 3 star. Ari comps will wane a little bit, but her nerf wasn't that huge. With the right item, she can still destroy people. Ash comps might really be back in the meta. Infinity Edge plus Last Whisper Ash is extremely strong in this patch, practically deleting the units once she gets going. Cultists will be much better early game with the Chosen, so that might help them survive the mid game a little bit better, which is their Achilles heel currently. Other than that, they remain at the mid tier comp, but potentially explosive since the Runin's buff, coupled with the two sharpshooter buff, makes Jin a very scary champion. Speaking of sharpshooters, they will probably be hurting a little bit, but the damage isn't that gutted. Even if they drop from their current S tier, they are at worse than A tier comp. Definitely still worth playing. Dazzler is not exactly a comp, but the trait should be much more splashable and their chosens are much more viable. Definitely countering AD based comps big time. Morgana plus Ezreal could be working some devastating permanent 80% AD reduction for the opponent. Assassins and ninjas got hit quite a bit, at least the Kali carry comps. Talon is fine, but the ninja girl we all love is not exactly facing the gutter, but is hurting nonetheless. The 0.25 second change might seem a little bit small, but it's quite tangible, especially if it's the difference between the target casting. She will have much more counterplay with the tanks in the backline, as she will take quite a little bit of time to kill them. And that's going to be all for this video. Thanks for tuning in, and let us know which comp you think will dominate 10.22. If you want to get better at TFT, visit ProGuides.com where you can find a challenger coach that will help you reach your dream rank. Special shout out to Lytic, Juan Pablo, and Antonio for making this video happen as they are the ones that are writing the scripts, editing the videos, and making the thumbnails. Can't do it without these guys. Anyway, hope you guys are staying safe, hope you guys are staying healthy, and you have a wonderful day. Peace.